Hello and a warm welcome back to my art studio. In this video I'll be drawing the variegated rose using Stabilo Carbothello pencils on pastel matte paper surface. After the initial sketch is in on the paper, I begin with each petal and I'm using the anthracite colour of pastel matte paper. This is actually my preferred surface for pastel pencils because there's very little dust and the results are super vivid. I've tried sanded papers, the type that you would use with pastel sticks, but I find they wear the pastel pencils down too fast. Any graininess that you can see here can be easily eliminated by either greater pressure or applying another layer. One of the greatest things about this combination of using pastel papers and the pastel mat is you can place light colours over dark. You can also get superior blending really easily. The tooth of the paper is quite unique and it's less gritty and far more pleasant to work with and the res desired results are quick because it's ultimately forgiving. It's the luminosity and vivid quality that drew me to this medium in the first place. Before I started, I tested out some coloured pencils on this paper, which actually work really great with this pastel mat. But the saturation and the richness, because of the dark background, just weren't there. Pastel mat is great for wet mediums, and I've used coloured pencils and solvents on it with very interesting and successful results. You can see a previous video on that. I'm using a sheet of glassine to shield my hand. While there's very little dust, I didn't want to smudge the anthracite paper because I wanted to leave it just as it was, meaning I didn't want to put a background in. And it is very hard to erase pastel pencils on a pastel matte surface, so I had to be extra careful. If you don't have any glassine, you can use a plastic sheet protector. I used a Stabilo Carbothello plastic manual pencil sharpener, but you can use any sharpener that you would with any regular size pencil. But I find I get more consistent results when I use the same type of sharpener for the same type of pencils. You're not wasting pigment this way because you're not having to reshape your pencils with different sharpeners constantly. For this um, pencil, I used a hand crank sharpener to get the long lead, but this is just about to break off. So I like to use short leads because they are just a little bit more stable. I found this reference, it's a free one on Pixabay, and I'll list the exact reference to that. So if you want to download it, you can. If you love working with vibrant colour, this particular reference is perfect. I want to explain the process, the working process a bit. If you've never used pastel pencils before, it's a bit of a difference from using just coloured pencils. It's like painting and colouring at the same time. If you're working on a petal and it starts looking wrong, and you're finding it's not looking like your reference at all, no worries, you can just add more colour on top because with pastel matte, you can add many layers regardless of the colour that you've just placed down. You just need to get used to working lightly so that you don't fill the tooth of the paper too fast. And I've mentioned it before, but it's worth saying that paying close attention to the reference material is a really key element in a successful drawing, because what we think we see is not what we actually see. For instance, I didn't think I'd be using any browns in this rose, but they were definitely present and it quite surprised me. So I had to grab a few more browns as I worked. The key to smooth transitions in the petal 
is all about gentle layering and avoiding scrubbing back and forth motions. You'll want to lift the pencils in your strokes to achieve that soft finish. And one of the ways to create realism in anything is about placing lights and darks in the right places and next to each other. But these can all be worked out as you go with this pastel matte surface and the pastel pencils. And it's really surprisingly not about using the right colors at all. The Stabilo Carbothello pencils only have 60 in their range. So if you're using these pencils, the chances are you're not going to have all those reds and oranges and yellows that exist in a rose, but it doesn't matter. You can create any shade you want by layering and applying the correct values. I found it was easiest to create this piece, this rose, by doing it petal by petal and then going back and refining and finishing all the details afterwards. Because there's no background in this piece, the work you do is all petals, so it went surprisingly fast. I think I did it in a little over three hours. If you work with colored pencils, you will know this is especially quick. So I find using pastel pencils and pastel mat a satisfying and fast combination. You don't have to use Carbothello pencils. You can use any pastel pencils to achieve this type of result. So if you have Koei Nors or Comte à Paris or any brand of decent quality pastel pencils, they'll work well on this surface. The graininess that you see here starts disappearing once you apply a bit more pressure and you're happy with your petal. So keeping your fingers far back from the tip of the pencil helps you to create lighter strokes, but it does take a bit of practice to get used to at first. All artwork is of course just trial and error and practice, but here the combination of supplies is especially important. You won't get any harsh lines with pastel pencils and you won't get much dust or fallout with the pastel mat. For some reason the cellulose fibres that it's made up with help to grip and hold on to the pigment. But just pay particular attention to your edges and sharpen your pencils continually if you need to. But in this piece I only had to sharpen a couple of pen pencils twice I think. I think I used a total of 18 pencils to create this piece was a couple of greys, a white for the highlights, a cream, just a few yellows, some oranges and reds of course, one burgundy, a couple of those browns that I wasn't expecting, and then just two greens. Surprisingly, there was no erasing done, and I didn't use any blending tools at all, not even my fingertips. And you want to avoid getting your fingers involved in your artwork if you can get out of the habit of it. It is tempting, but our fingers contain lots of oils. And I've also found oils in my work even when I've just washed my hands. So all of the blending that was achieved here was using either strokes or pressure or layers or a combination of all three. And because there's no background to this particular piece, which by the way is 8 by 10 inches in size, it's ready for framing and no fixative is necessary either. So just sandwich it between glassine or tracing paper, or if you haven't got either of those, you might be able to find some parchment paper in your kitchen cupboard that works well too and just place it between those sheets and put it in a portfolio. And if you don't have a portfolio, just sandwich it between a couple of large books until you're ready to display it. I hope you'll give this combination of pastel mat and pastel pencils a try. If you've enjoyed this video, 
please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.